The Great Step, millenniums of events, hundreds of nomadic tribes and people. They lived, worked, made discoveries, conquered large tracts of lands, and left us some mysteries. To learn more about it, watch the project called Enigma of the Great Step. In today's program, Kazakh's Thermopylae. What does Anrakai mean? Batirs with same names. American poet and philosopher Ralph Waldo Emerson once told, there is no real history except the biography. This thesis is controversial, but very relevant in some cases, especially if we're talking about the period when the events were not documented and written down or in kept in memory of people, as by word of mouth, exaggerated by myths and legends. An example from the history of our people is the kazakh jungarian Wars. It was almost a 200-year confrontation, which ended a few centuries ago. And thanks to the findings of curious scientists, today we have some answers for our questions. But the number of secrets are still great. So, who was our enemy? What is common between the Battle of Orbulak and the feat of King Leonidas of Sparta of Thermopylae? And why did the great disaster happen in our steppe? Sixteen thirty to sixteen forties, the collapse of the Mongolian Empire and the conquest of the Mongols by the Manchurians led to the establishment of three new states in Central Asia: the Jungarian Kalmyk and Khoshkhutanats. The Jungarian state was formed after alliance of four Oirat clans. These four Oirat clans, Chorosuses, Derbets, Khoshuds, Torhuds, established one state for the first time. In Chinese history, they are called Iliutus. Here it should not be confused. They are not some other nation, they are Western Mongols. Ziyung R is the Mongolian word which means left part or left hand. Right part is called Birungar. Thus, we are talking about the same people who are called Oirats, or politically by term Jungars. Their alliance stood out with their power and military discipline. Their rules were strict, and there was a penalty for leaving the battlefield and the death penalty for treason. Their common goal was to seize the foreign territories. The lands of the Kazakh Khanate always attracted the Jungar rulers, Hong Taiji. On the one hand, having occupied the Simireche and the Sirdaria regions, it could control important trade routes and expand cattle breeding areas. On the other hand, they could strengthen their own borders and collect taxes from the conquered population. And finally, it could give the bright prospects for the slave trade development, which is one of the key economic activities of the Jungars. Let's consider the period between 1457, the year of the first penetration, and the middle of the 18th century, the time of disappearance of the Jungar Khanat. These were three centuries of close relationship. There were periods when the Jungar clans were part of the Kazakh Khanat. There were times when both the Kazakhs and Jungars made raids. Military confrontations were replaced by diplomatic relations, by marriage unions. In general, everything was like on other territories. The first major battle between Kazakhs and Jungars is the Battle of Orbulak, which took place in 1643. The enemy attacked without warning. As a result, the ruler of the Kazakh Khanat, Zhangir Khan, made an unexpected move and decided to confront the enemy's 50,000 troops with his detachment of 600 soldiers until the rest of the army arrived. Everybody knows about the Battle of 480th BC during the Persian invasion of Greece when the King Leonidas I, King Leonidas of Sparta, the 300 Spartans resisted the invincible army of Xerxes. Their task was to keep the enemy and not let deeper invasion into Hellas. And they carried out their task by choosing the correct place for the battle. In the case of the Battle of Urbulak, not everything is clear. According to one of the most common versions, our ancestors managed to dig deep ditches before the arrival of the enemy and trap him. Ружья, которые были 
The weaponry which had the soldiers of Jangir Khan, 600 people, were wicked guns, and their fate of fire was not so good. Two to three shots in one minute would be phenomenal, but it was not enough to stop the flow of 50,000 troops with such fire. That is point one. Secondly, that ditch could not be a barrier to them at all. Then perhaps the large territory is the territory of the main battle when the Emir of Samarkand, Jalan Thos Bahadur, arrived with 20,000 soldiers to support Jangir. The confrontation to deter the enemy took place on the territory which was uncomfortable for the enemy. If 600 soldiers if 600 soldiers deterred 50,000 troops, probably it was in some narrow area. Perhaps it was at a pass from the Kigian district to Kyrgyzia. There is a narrow gorge called Santash. There are such passes where one person can hardly go through it. And most likely in these areas, in such narrow gorges, Jangir Khan managed to deter such a huge army. In the result of the Battle of Orbulak, the Kazakhs defeated the enemy. Plans of the enemy to seize new lands were disrupted. Unfortunately, this did not last long. Everyone has heard about the so-called years of the Great Disaster, the dark side in the history of our people. In 1723, the Jungars, led by Tsi Wang Rabdan, the Hong Taiji of the Jungar Khanat, invaded the territory of South Kazakhstan in the Simireche defeated the militia and captured thousands of men, women and children. Many died in a selfless and heroic effort to save the lives of others. Those who survived left their property and fled in search of a new home. At first, the power of the Jungars was greater and the Kazakhs left their homes, fled, some of them reached Tashkent. People say, Akhtaban Shuburindi, al Kakol Sulama, which means walked until our soul treads worn off and exhausted fell near the lake. This is the Alakol Lake in near modern Tashkent. So the Kazakhs reached there. Few people know that folk song Ilim Ai is about this tragedy was written by a keen and famous batir, Koja Birgian Girao, a contemporary of those incidents. A son departed from father, and daughter from mother, brought lots of sorrow. Oh, my homeland, oh, my homeland. What a severe period. The bluebird flew away from our nation. The sky is gray because of dust that fills the air after people's escape. It is even worse than a harsh winter season. Oh, my homeland, oh, my homeland. Some people blame the carelessness of the Kazakh sultans for these incidents. They say that the sultans did not prepare for the resistance. It is fair to say that the Jungar Khanat always had a stronger and more serious opponent, the Qing Empire. Therefore, the main forces were concentrated on the border with China, but everything changed in one moment. In December of 1722, when the whole Jungar army was standing and waiting for the arrival of the Chinese army, the army of the Qing Empire, just before the very beginning of the battle, they heard the news about the death of Kangxi Emperor. The emperor died and fight was impossible. Following the instructions, the Chinese army signed the peace treaty and left the place of battle. In the early spring of 1723, more than 100,000 Jungar troops stood in one place waiting for the order. And the Hong Taiji decided to use this moment for another campaign. And indeed, the enemy did not miss this opportunity. He attacked and defeated, and the Kazakhs had to decide what to do to surrender or fight against the enemy. Which Bakhtir did inspire the militiamen? Is it right to call the place of the battle of Anirekai, the place of groans and sobs of enemy? Why and how did we win? The representatives of three Kazakh Jews gathered for the cruel tithe, the general meeting before the major battle, which we will describe further. In the autumn of 1726, Han, Sultans, Buiz, Batirs, and elders gathered in the Ordubasi place, which is located to the west of Shimkent. They elected the Han of the younger Jews, Abu Khair as the leader of the national militia. Abu Khair had already made a number of successful campaigns against the Jungars. 
However, this time it was a question of the complete defeat and expulsion of the invaders from the Kazakh native lands. At this time, Commanders of the army of three Jews were also appointed on this coral tie. Commander of the senior Jews was Sauruk Batir. Tailak Batir led the militia of the younger Jews. And Kabanbay Batir headed the detachment of the middle Jews. Here are the words of Boganbay Batir. How long can we hide from them, these greyhounds? The Kazakhs began to fight against the Jungars. There are versions that the Kurultai was held in another place. It is the task of historians to find out the truth. The most important here is that the general meeting gave indisputable results. I have found the only thing that in the north of the Kizlorda region there is a place called Tamgali. There, Abu Khair gathered all three Jews. But other historians say that it was on the Kazigurk Mount in Shimkent. It was dangerous to gather on that mount. We found flags on every clan of the Kazakhs in Tamgali. They made incision, blood dripped, and they kissed the Quran. That's how we were born. At the meeting, he said, we are one people. And the one who refused, who told that one man had stolen his sister or cattle or deceived him, was executed at once. And everyone understood that Abu Khair was powerful. He raised all Kazakhs. Chingisid should lead him as he had good fortune. So Abu Khair led them. Shak Shak Jani Biek, Tarhans and generals followed him. It should be noted that the foresight and strategic thinking of the militia leaders played a big role in this fight. They chose the Anirakai Mountains and the Valley of Alakol Lake in the past It Ishpez as the place of battle. It is the territory of the current Jambul region. It was convenient to start the liberation of other parts of the Simirechir region after the successful outcome of the operation here. In general, the word Andrakai means crying, moaning, and it can be used when you are telling about humans, animals, and nature. Here is an example of this word, Jel Andrap Tur, is translated as a strong wind is blowing between the gorges. Then we never say the horse is crying. We tell about one animal, the camel. To ye an rap tur, the camel is crying. And it can be told crying person. So here we should consider it from three sides. Domestic historians managed to determine the territorial boundaries of the battle area, the so-called Anrekai Triangle. Undoubtedly, our ancestors had a thorough strategy for the battle. They chose a terrain location. The landscapes here changed, which allowed them to alternate terrestrial confrontations with cavalry attacks. Another advantage was the knowledge of natural secrets, for example, the presence of the lake It Ishpez with very salty water that even the dog does not drink this water. However, we must not forget that the Jungars also had good combat experience. It was a it was a militia feudal state. It also should be noted that it was quite better than the Kazakh militia. Here, of course, the fact that the Tsarist administration policy played a big role. They sought to push these two nomadic states to fight, and thus to weaken one of them. And it must be mentioned that the Jungars even mastered the craft of casting guns, of course, with the help of a captive Swedish officer, Renat. How could this Swedish serviceman and cartographer become a captive of the Jungars? Johann Gustav Renat served in the army of Charles VII of Sweden and was captured by the Russians after the victory of Peter the Great. He was sent from Moscow to Tobolsk, where he joined the military convoy that was sent to support the expedition of Ivan Buchholz. Sewang Rabdan's troops defeated the detachment and the captive Renat was sent to Hulja, where they decided to use his knowledge and skills. 
By that time, the Kazakh militia had also mastered the skills of conducting fiery battles. The Kazakhs also sought to master the skills of using advanced weapons, the fiery battle, as they said at that time. Basically, they bought them from Central Asia. As you know, behind Central Asia there are India and Iran, where the predominance of England had already begun. And English rifles, which were written off, reached the Kazakhs through Central Asian supplies and markets. So the Battle of Anrakai began approximately in the spring of 1729. According to legend, it lasted 40 days. Sometimes there were small clashes and sometimes bloody battles. Unfortunately, it is impossible to confirm some information, for example, the exact number of troops. Someone says that there were 20,000 soldiers and someone believes that 150,000 soldiers fought in this battle. The territory of Anrakai is 70 kilometers and the battle took place with a radius of 17 to 19 kilometers. In this area of 17 to 19 kilometers, 80,000 strong army was not able to fight. Probably the number of troops on both sides was 80,000, but only 9 to 10,000 of soldiers participated in this battle. Experts say that another mistake is to believe that in this battle, the future Abil Lai Khan, real name Abil Mansur, killed the Jungarian Batir Sharish, who was a relative of the Hong Taiji Galdan Sirin. There are many legends that people confuse. There were no Sharish and Abil Lai, and some say that Abil Lai was there and that he was 25 years old. But actually, Abil Lai was 18 years old at that time. He was born in 1711, and Nani battle was in 1729 to 1730s. Abilai could not be 25 years old. It is history, it is the memory of our people, the memory of our ancestors. Abilai's battle was in 1741. It was another battle. Indeed, it is known that in the 40s of the 18th century, Abilai Khan led 200 centennials and was captured by the Jungar squad. Maybe, at that time, he defeated a relative of Galdan Sirin. Uh, At the time when Abulai Khan was captured by Galdan Siren's troops, Abulai Khan killed Galdan Siren's son, Sharishi, in single combat. And Galdan Siren, a forward-thinking politician, did not revenge and kill Abulai. He introduced him to his nephews, Amur Sama and Davut Si. He felt that some troubled times were going to start and everyone needed support in this increasingly turbulent world. And here he saw the ruler Abulai, a supporter of his future descendants. And this happened. Perspicacious Galdan Siren was not mistaken. Abulai supported his nephews more than once. But in the battle on the Rekai, young Abu Mansur probably did not make something remarkable. Nevertheless, the result was clear. The Kazakhs defeated the Jungars, and experts say there were several reasons for this victory. I must say that the steppe nomadic people, first of all, were warriors. Their lifestyle, their economy, their attitude, everything implied military training. Their economic activities and the life itself were on the horseback. This is also a great preparation. Every movement, every element of economic management also implies bypass and capture. Even the roundup hunting, which was organized several times a year by the whole clan, had not only practical but also academic significance. Hunters tightly squeezed the ring, preventing any animal from getting past. First, the highest ranking person had to knock down the most powerful animal in a single combat, and only then the other hunters could join. The military hierarchy was strictly followed there. It's not a secret that the steppe locals had to count only on their strength, and therefore they always had their eyes wide open.
If you are a nomad, you cannot call a militia or someone else for help. You must be able to defend your life yourself. And surely it would be difficult to win without the glorious Kazakh Batirs. Do you know who were Kaban by Batir or Bogan by Batir? Who could get such honorable titles? And why is the history of the Jungars much more tragic than the Kazakhs? People of the whole steppe knew the skills, abilities, and strength of the Kazakh Batirs. They were great riders, archers, masters in using such weapons as a battle axe, Aibalta, and others. They could easily pierce the part of enemy's body unprotected with a ring armor with a spear. The Kazakh Institute of Batirs is fully developed in contrast with other Turkic states and Central Asian countries. Batirs were considered a separate elite of society. The Kazakh Institute of Batirs was formed completely. There was the initiation of Batirs from his first ascents till receiving the title Bahadur. Of course, such Batir as Kaban by Batir was Bahadur. He had more than 103 fights and battles and was defeated in none of them. Our people know the names of the Batirs who took part in the Battle of Anrakai. Kabanbai, Boganbai, Naurizbai, Raimbek, Malai Sari, Bayan, Oljabai, Tailak, Berdi Koja, and others. However, did you know that there were a lot of Batirs with the same names? There were 14 Batirs with the name Kabanbai, 13 with the name Boganbai, or with the name Sauruk. The list can be continued indefinitely. But how to identify them? For example, Kabanbai, the famous Karakere Kabanbai. That's it. Karakere Kabanbai is a truly historical person, but his real name was Irasil. In other words, sometimes it happened that a Jigit, a man who received one name at birth, eventually became well known under another name. And experts say this could be explained by the tradition of the Kazakh people. The Kazakhs have such tradition, a daughter-in-law does not say the name of her husband's brother. If he was well-built, she should call him Kabat, Kaban. That is why he was called Kabanbai. Or even they say he could easily catch and kill the boar. That's why they called him Kabanbai. The same is with the name Bogunbai. It is derived from the word Bogin. It's an antelope which runs fast. Bogunbai was very fast and skillful. At the same time, it was not necessary to have a muscular body to become Batir. Thin young men and mature men could receive this honorable title. The key factor here was the courage that was inculcated in steppe people from the early childhood. Batirs are not the ones that people draw with muscular bodies and armor with a terrible look and frowny faces. Batir is a bit different concept. I met Baljan Mamushali several times. He's a real Batir. During the war, he used to take his gun and say, I will shoot the one who will back down. He always felt where the enemy could come from. And when he was behind the enemy's line, instead of rescuing, he gathered all the fugitives and opened fire. He is a paragon. He is a Batir. His good fortune and flair, and bullets couldn't even stop him. It should be noted that by the end of the 18th century, China almost demolished the Jungars and the Khanat ceased to exist. In the case of our ancestors, it was not about the extermination of the people, but about the deprivation of their sovereign status and complete change of their lifestyle. And despite the colossal human losses, the forced migrations and the economic crisis, the steppe people kept their spirits up. 
Surprisingly, Anrakai brought us more than just victory that changed the course of the war. For the first time in history, all Kazakh clans united, and in the result, they defeated the common enemy. In the spring of 1729, the place called Anrakai, our ancestors realized favor of their close relationship, which we still continue to cultivate. <laughs>